Hey, it's BT Patel from Gemini. My guest today is Jamie Hanks Elliott. She races in the British Junior Supersport Division, and she comes from a lineage of just great racers. Her grandma podium in the Isle of Man TT. So she's dealing with that kind of bloodline. And we talked about racing and you could just tell the passion in her exudes from just everything she talks about racing. So you're going to love this interview. It's funny. She's fun. And she's also very competitive. You're going to love it. Enjoy Jamie Hanks Elliott. Oh, uh, when I hear that, I know it's time. It's almost like being a racer on the grid. You know, when the, when you get a last handshake to the, to your mechanic and they go, Hey, good luck. You go, yeah, thanks. All right, BT with Tales from a Gemini. I'm just being silly because I've got a racer. I'm, I'm going to call her a budding superstar because you know what, honestly, and it's not like I do, I stalk on the internet and try to find a guest. Like, okay, I got to find somebody. And uh, so I hit this person up and I didn't hear anything. But when I did, though, it was probably like three or four in the morning. So I'm like, ah, I'm probably going to have a guest this week. And then all of a sudden, I don't know where, and it says, yeah, I love to be on your podcast. I go, <gasps> and I was so excited. And then I looked you up and I didn't realize the the uh the uh, where you come from the your whole family tree it's like nothing but racers your grandma yeah. your grandma was the first female to podium on the Isle of Man TT that's correct yeah <laughs> do, 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 do you feel like a do you feel like a pressure because your grandma listen her grandma podium on the Isle of Man TT when you're across the pond as we say Wyatt that's a big deal Isle of Man TT is like the Indianapolis 500 here and then her mom raced and now it's up to the granddaughter so do you feel that pressure Jamie? Definitely I do feel like there's pressure to perform because uh, that's like some big routes to step into like to like compared to what my nan has like achieved and my mom has achieved I'm still just at the start but yeah, there's definitely some, some, uh, yeah, definitely got to live up to some big expectations because of them. I mean, honestly, when I found that out, props to your nan because she podium in 1968, yeah. right? And she, that, that that's the year I was born. Really? I, yeah, I should. I probably shouldn't have said that. But that's the year I was born, and <laughs> the fact that she was doing it back then with the men, and you imagine, I mean, for all that women fight for and all the rights in 1968, for her to do that, that is mind boggling. Oh, I know. It's great. I, I couldn't do what she did because both my nan and my mom, they're both passengers on sidecars. So my family originally is like from, come from sidecars. I was the first person to, well, my granddad had to go on like two wheels for a bit and decided he liked three wheels. But they, both my mum and my nan passengered on sidecars. And I always said, I could never do it. I could never put trust in someone else's hands <laughs> like that. And the way they just hang off the side around roads and they're like this close to walls. And I'm like, that's not for me. Let me tell you something. This is how I knew I was ready, I, that I, that you were my kind of person to talk to. Because you have two Instagrams, right? One's for the racing and one yeah. is just like a regular Instagram. And no offense, but for a person your age, a young, vibrant, beautiful girl your age, she only has like seven posts. And my cool. favorite post was you in a dress and it said, feet are suffering. And I, yeah. I, and I laughed and I laughed because... <laughs> You look like you were miserable. You look great, but you just look miserable. I go, this is a racer right here. For you to only have seven posts on your personal Instagram and said, my feet are suffering. That's because I'm not used to, like, I don't go out. So, because obviously my weekends are just racing. So, it's just, that's like one of the first times I ever went out and had heels on. And I don't wear heels. So I'm, with, I'm more boots, like motorcycle boots. So, like, I, I, I could not get on with them. I'm not gonna lie, I laughed so hard when you said that. <laughs> when you said feet are suffering, because that's a sign of a true person who is just committed to just racing. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you know, no offense, but uh, dressing up is probably not your forte. Like, ah, I got a rare dress. Ah, you know. It's not. It's like me in a suit. If I if I have a suit on, I'm I'm going to court. You know, basically, if you see if you see me with a suit on, it's like I gotta go see a judge. You know, and it's not gonna be good. Uh -huh. So I love that about you already, man. So you're a racer through and through. So now, now for you personally, growing up, I always ask this question: Were uh, did the bike life find you, or did you find the bike life? <laughs> 
Because even okay. though, you know, you're, you know, you're, you're all your people raced, it's a different yeah. generation now. And sometimes yeah, yeah. they push you into it, sometimes they don't. So how about for you? I think I've always grew up around bollock stock. I'm pretty sure even when my mum was pregnant, she was racing, but she didn't know. <laughs> so I've literally always, literally in the blood. Like I've always, I've been to, when my granddad raced like, all, all around the country, to the Isle of Man. I've been to the Isle of Man every year since I was born. Uh, and I think they always knew it, I was, it was because I'm a twin sister. I've got a twin sister as well. So we were both like we both used to go all the time. And I think they definitely the plan was for us both to get on sidecars. But I kind of took the first step to to say I want to do this. This is something I want to do. But I st- I started quite late. So uh, before racing, me and my sister both played football. So we both come from like we, we absolutely love football. I think my parents were like, oh, this is good. They're not going to want to do racing. It's obviously <laughs> horrible for them to watch. And so they were like, oh, this is a lot, a lot cheaper as well. <laughs> and then um, I think I was at a race meeting one day and I saw some of my age and I was like, I want to do it. That's something I want to do. And I was like, I had to wait for my granddad to retire first. So my granddad retired in 2016 and then I started in 2017. So they thought they'd finished it all then. And then I said, oh, natural, I'll never go. <laughs> so it was always going to happen. Who's your favourite football team? Who's your favourite football team? Uh, so I support Aston Villa and um, Tom, uh, uh, well, I'm sp- like assuming, you know, who Tom Hanks is. I'm not related to him, by the way. I know we have the same second name, but I'm not related to him. Well, I didn't think, I didn't think so. Um, he, uh, he actually supports Aston Villa as well. So, so that's your favourite <laughs> team? That's your favourite team? Yeah. Well, from here on out, it's going to be one of my teams. I'm not my favorite team, but it's going to be one of my favorite teams. Because if, if, <laughs> if you like the team, then I'm going to like the team. So when I watch it, I'm going to right. think of you. So in what position yeah. in what position did you play? What position did you play? So uh, when I started playing football, uh, probably around, like I think it was about 10, 11, I actually played for Aston Villa, the ladies team in the academy. So I was a goalkeeper then. Um, and then... Like I, had, I know everyone. This every football player says this. I did go through a lot of injuries, and that's why I wasn't picked. And everyone says, everyone always says, "Oh yeah, I, was, I got a knee injury." But it was actually a knee injury that finished me. And then um, I had a couple of years out, and then I joined like local football teams. Before I decided, I had to pick between football and racing, and it was always going to be racing. And it was hard to let go of football. It was hard because it's it's all I'd done. But I decided to keep my football number, and that's now my racing number. So number 16, that's where my, that number comes from. I was going to ask you that. That's awesome. Okay, so how did you get hurt being a goalie? No offense, because you're talking to an American. So, you know, our, yeah. our football is actually should be called, you know, uh, something, it's something else ball. I mean, you guys have the original yeah. football, which is you're, you're correctly call it football. <laughs> but you know how we are as Americans. So how did you get yeah. hurt being a goalie? How did you get hurt? So uh, a lot of it was because. Because I was so small, I had a lot of like growing pains and I had something that was caused by like having growth spurts and it's called something called Oscar Slatters. It's in your knee and you get it like a lot of young people get it like young athletes and I just suffered a lot. I had half a year out, but because of the level I was at, it was like really competitive. If you had half a year out, you couldn't prove yourself. So there's always someone else that's going to come and step in your shoes. So yeah, that's kind of sort of what happened. But then... I mean, while I was there, I decided I didn't really want to be a goalkeeper anymore. Anyway, I, I much prefer to like be out, especially on when it's winter and you're against a team that you know you're going to beat and you stood there and you're winning 10 and you're freezing cold. Your hands, your fingers are going to drop off. And I was like, this isn't for me. I need to be running around. <laughs> if you were playing goalie, what would you play? A forward? Uh, I When I stopped playing goalkeeper, I, I was then a midfielder. So I actually played uh, on the left wing, but I'm right footed, but... I was always one for, for cutting in and did, did, yeah. Did you, was, did you score any goals? Did you score any goals? Oh yeah. I score, I actually scored. I remember scoring. This is the only goal I remember scoring. Uh, it was my first game for my new team and uh, I didn't know anyone. I didn't speak to anyone in the team that he just like picked me to play. And I remember someone crossed the ball in and actually volleyed it from the outside of the box and it went into the top. It was a complete fluke. Like I didn't mean it at all. I don't even think it was a shot. I just kind of swung my leg at it and my leg at it. And it went straight like proper into the top corner. And I was like, oh no, they're, they're all going to think I'm amazing now. I don't want to tell them it was a fluke. <laughs> but yeah. So, okay. So, so was it, so was it football or was it uh, racing or bikes that were your first love? As far as sport goes, uh, it was always bikes. 
all oh. those bikes. Cause I'd loved them since I was before I played football. Pretty much from when I can remember, as far back as I remember, I just loved the smell, like yes. the noise. Every, the smell was everything. I just used to love, like, just coming home and all your clothes smell like like petrol fumes, and oh, it's my, my favorite thing ever. That that is the greatest. I always tell people uh, for me. I mean, because uh, this week is Moto GP for us, you know. So I'm going down to yeah. Austin to watch the race. And, oh, yeah, yeah. and there's nothing better than waking up on a on a race weekend. That FP1, no matter how early you get there, somebody's always warming up a bike. No matter how yeah. early you get there, somebody's like, oh, oh, oh yeah. and, you, and you smell that smell. Then you might get some coffee, or you guys get a get a little tea, a little little, yeah. little planters tea. Is it the planters tea? How you guys call it? Yeah, you get a little tea, and then like you know, I sip it and maybe maybe get uh, you know like a croissant or whatever, and you just hear that, yeah. oh, oh, and that to me that's the rest of the day. The rest of the day is just perfect. Just watching bites yeah. and you smell that smell. It is honestly they need to bottle it up and put it up in the perfume. I would buy it. I love that <laughs> smell. <laughs> I love the fumes. I love it. <laughs> that, uh, it, it un, un, unless you are around it and you have that love for it, I don't think they people really get it. They don't understand, no, understand it. You know what I mean? No. Yeah, I completely understand. But oh, I just I don't know how you can't love it. Everything about it, it's just so good. The noise, everything. <laughs> Now, so now, so then back then though, did you know eventually that you were gonna race? Was it one of those situations where like you love bikes, but and maybe you said, "No, I'm not gonna race. I'm just gonna love it." But you just felt yourself being drawn toward it, like yeah, hundred percent. Like to be fair, when I first asked, I remember like I was watching a race and my mum was stood next to me, and I said it, but I said it, and I was like, "She's not gonna say yeah," and she was like. Oh, you, I can't even remember what she said now. I just remember that she said one day, she was like, oh, I remember, oh, that was it. I remember we sat down and I was looking across and I could see her on the computer looking through bikes. And I was like, I was sat there, I was like, I don't even want to say anything. I was just sat there like, yes. I was like, I'm going to race. <laughs> Were you excited? Were you excited? I, I was, I was, I was so excited, but I was also scared because to be honest, I started quite late because a lot of people over here start when they're like, three, four, like when they're just about to walk, they get on a bike straight away. But I was, I think I was, I was 13 or 14 when I got on a bike and I'd never ever, like I'd not even rode a bike before, uh, like not even automatic, semi-automatic, nothing. So I had to learn how to do gears and everything on a like an industrial estate. And then I got a two stroke and that was my first, the Prilly 125, that was my first bike and I was 14. Then I was quite, I was quite late to, late to the party, but... <laughs> Wow, you're like, I think, you're like an old lady being like 13, 14. Oh my, you're an old spinster, an old spinster. I am. <laughs> yeah, even in my class now, like I'm in the junior class, I'm 19. I'm probably the third oldest. Like I'm quite old compared to everyone else. <laughs> you're like the old lady at 19. I know, I'm, I'm only 19. I'm not a slit teenager and I feel like proper old. <laughs> The old 19 year old. Yeah, you're done. You're finished. Yeah. yeah get the wheelchair out. <laughs> you're done. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's awesome, man. I love it. Uh, okay, so like when was your first race race? Like how old were your first race? Uh, I was 13. No, I was 14, I think. And it was at, so there's like a track local to me where I learned how to ride. They, they let me go out and like practice riding and stuff and they have like race meetings every month um it's literally the track is literally a triangle and i remember my first race there and i think i was doing like i think it was like a two minute lap and compared to now my fastest lap's like a one minute four second lap and i was doing two minutes lap, and i was getting lapped but even i was getting lapped i was like if i beat one person i was happy i was like it, i was just enjoying it I, I remember just riding with the smile on my face all the time I used to love it but now i just want to like it's completely different. I just want to win. Okay. <laughs> so, okay. So now a great question is, cause I heard Scott Redding say this and it blew my mind. It's like, do you enjoy the actual racing or do you like beating people or like, you know, are you competitive that way? Because some racers, it blew my mind. Like they don't enjoy the actual race. Like they didn't really like racing. They liked the competitive aspect of it and they don't like getting beat. That's what I like to win, but they didn't enjoy the actual racing part. Yeah. Yeah. I think I've learned, like, especially, like, recently, like, beating people is, like, it's probably the best feeling ever. But then I have to remind myself that, like, I'm doing this, this is, I'm doing this for fun. So even if I'm not beating people, but I'm in, 
like when I'm in battles, even when I'm in like in race, I just think to myself, God, this is so fun. Like just battling with people. And even like this weekend, probably had one of my like my best races in terms of like I've never really been in a massive group of riders battling. And I always used to be scared of that. And to actually be the one that's like battling with people and it's just yeah, I enjoy I enjoy beating people, but I just just ride in to be honest. Like I just love it so much. <laughs> I think that, that, that's a that's a question I was gonna ask you. Like, do you feel comfortable in packs because there's some riders even at the moto gp level like they're great riders but you notice in packs they don't really feel comfortable and they don't do so well so i was gonna ask you is that your comfort zone now like are you more comfortable in packs or do you re- would you rather be on your own i think a hundred well being on your own it, it's good because you you've only really got yourself to race against but like the whole point of racing is to beat people and like riding in packs for me i really enjoy it because it's like it helps develop your race craft and you've got a plan you can't pass so if you wanted to pass someone you've got to plan it like three corners ahead because if you pass someone into this corner you're going to have three more people come up the inside you and you kind of have to plan it so i enjoy that part of it but i think in our class especially it's it's one of them like you know like certain riders might have like certain reputations so if you know they're behind you you kind of think oh god like you're just expecting someone to come and wipe your back wheel out or something but then it's I definitely do like like racing impacts. It's so much fun, but because our bikes in our class are so similar and like the skill level is very similar, I think it's sometimes it gets a bit. It does really get like proper close, and there's like a lot of elbows out and like bouncing into each other and stuff. But to be fair, that's what I find fun about it anyway. Like it, it does get the adrenaline going, and yeah, I do enjoy that part of it. Do, do, do you like getting physical? Like the physical part? Do you like like getting close and maybe there's an elbow and you go, well, you know what? You take this elbow and take this and take this. It, I don't know if I say I enjoy it because it's scary, but um, I'm I'm not the one to. I would never go and go out of my way to elbow someone. But if someone's coming out towards me, I'm like, I've got my elbow out like this, and like you know, nowhere near my my break or anything, and. Yeah, it is it is fun. I do actually enjoy it, but it's weird that I enjoy it because it's scary at the same time. Now, now, would you consider yourself a very competitive person? And, and have you always been that way? Oh, 100%. Like, I, I want to do well at every, anything I do. Like Even academically, like I always wanted to be the best. Like, I, I'm not saying I'm a teacher's pet. I was like, far from that. But I always <laughs> wanted to have like grades and everything. And like even I'm at university now, so like, I just want to everything I do it, it, it literally in anything I just want to win everything <laughs> <laughs> that's good though that's a that's a great trait to have you think you think yeah, you got that from your, your from your grand you think so from your nan nan uh, definitely like do, like going into because my, my granddad lives two doors up from me so we're like neighbors so I gotta go into his like he's literally got a room just for trophies and it's just full of trophies and I think oh, I want that I need to have that a room just for trophies. <laughs> I need to have that many trophies that I need a room for them. <laughs> <laughs> that's great though. But that's a great goal to have though. You know what I mean? Yeah. I yeah. love I love that. Okay, so now what what are you studying in university? What are you studying? Uh, so I'm studying sports rehabilitation, which is in simple terms, it's like physiotherapy. Yeah, I know what that uh, is. So yeah, I'm, yeah, be that way. I know what it is. I'm not that stupid. Yeah. yeah I know what that is. <laughs> I think because like obviously I'd love to be a racer. I'd love my job to be a racer, but you do have to have something to fall back on. And I have noticed there's not a lot of, in like the British paddock anyway, there's not any that I know sports rehabilitators for when someone crashes and gets injured. So God forbid, I'd, obviously I'd, I'd love to do racing for the rest of my life. But if I had to pick up a job, I'd, I'd still want to be involved within racing i definitely want to be like a physiotherapist for people that crash and get injured and trying to get back to racing and yeah i definitely want to that's something i'd want to do well listen like they always say education is important but racing is more important so yeah (laughs) yeah, so always always stick with racing i mean the books i mean you can read right that's all you need yeah yeah yeah. if you can read at a a first grade level you can read yeah yeah (laughs) (laughs) It's very expensive back up there. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay. So here's a great question now. Now that, you know, you're doing this type of racing, is there a chance maybe, would you like to try the, uh, the Isle of Man TT maybe? See, I, my, 
I don't think I could because how I want to ride is like, like I want to be on the edge all the time. And I feel like at the TT, you kind of have to, you have the limit and you've got to step down like 50% from that to be safe. And even though all my, like my mum and dad, my dad did it, my granddad, my nan, I don't think, but I know they don't want me to do it, especially on two wheels. They said they'd consider it if I was on a sidecar, but they just wouldn't let me do it on two wheels. They're like, with a sidecar, you've got, you've got an extra wheel so it's a bit more grip uh and and you can afford to make some little mistakes on side cars but i don't think oh it's too scary for me you know like not to have a runoff or anything is i couldn't even no it's not for me i I give those sidecar people credit but that was at uh actually one of the best vacations of my life was i went to um I went to Cadwell, went to Cadwell. Yeah. Okay, the next day, my buddy, he was a, a mechanic for uh, Leon Haslam, but we went yeah. to Oaten Park uh, to uh, help Hector Barbara get ready for the team. Went to Oaten Park, yeah, yeah. And, and then I did a track day at Donington. Yeah. And then the next day, I went to Silverstone and watched MotoGP. That was, that was the best vacation of my life. I was going to say that is like the best week someone could ever have. Um, it, it really, I mean, honestly, I know those tracks now, so I know a little bit. Uh, so I know those tracks now. Those British tracks are frightening because there's yeah. no runoff. They're like, they're like th- this wide. I mean, do you enjoy that? Oh, 100%. Like Cadwell Park, Norman Park, they're my two favorite tracks out of all the tracks here. I love them because I just think they're so, they're so technical and like that if you can especially Cadwell Park have you ever rode around Cadwell Park no I've seen Cadwell Park I know about the jump and that was the first place I went to I think it's a beautiful park only thing I, that I don't say like or I can't say I don't like is it I wish they had more uh, big big screens so you could watch it you yeah, know what I mean yeah, yeah. I, I agree with that um, they do so they have I think they carry like three at, when we go to BSB but they always put them where you can't see them yeah. <laughs> so it's um, it's always in the parts of the track where you're not going to go and watch. So, but they do definitely need like big screens. But yeah, Cadwell Park is, I love it. Like, unfortunately, we don't do it at BSB on, in my class. Um, but I do go on like track days and stuff there because it is the best track to learn. And honestly, if you can learn to ride around Cadwell Park fast, it makes every other British track feel easy because it's like literally that wide. I know. Uh, you've got to hit every apex and everything. And I just think if you can learn to ride around there, it just, it really does make every track feel loads easier. So you get that excitement, like, oh, I'm going to Cadwell. I mean, do you get all yeah, excited? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alton Park is actually my favorite track. I do love Alton Park. Alton Park's great. It's beautiful too. And that, and I love that now that I've been there, that when people talk about it, I can, like, I, I have a sense of <laughs> knowing that part. Yeah, I know it. So I've been there. It's like, yes, I know. I love yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so what what are your strong points when you race? Like, what what do you do really really well, and what part do you need to work on? Okay, so a part that I definitely need to work on is qualifying. My qualifying, I really struggle with doing a lap on my own, not chasing anyone. So I like I always I found this last year as well is I'd qualify down like in like twentieth and twenty first, but in the races I'd be able to get up to like top fifteen, uh, like top 10 with that group but I just really need to work on quite getting if I can get if I can qualify in the top 15 it makes my life so much easier in the race and it's like the same as this weekend I qualified in uh, 21st at Silverstone and ended race one in I finished 14th in race one and then 15th in race two but I was with that front group and it's just if I could qualify there I'd probably be able to like battle for the top five places because I do feel like once I'm in the group and I'm following people, it, it actually makes my riding easier. I find chasing people is easier for me than trying to race myself and beat my own lap time because it just gives you a bit of a, just like a carrot on the end of a stick. Do you know what I mean? It just, it yeah. gives you something to aim for. And like, it's just, it's like, I know what I need. It's like, um, if you've ever played MotoGP when you follow the ghost. Yes. It's like, it, that's literally what I need in qualifying to like, to be able to qualify. So that's something I've got to work on. I think my strong points are definitely my starts, 100% my starts. Like I can probably, it, it does help being sm- a smaller rider, but um, I'm, I find that I'm like quite good at getting off starts. I can like get to one or two rows in front, which is why I think qualifying, when I, when I learn how to qualify well, will help me a lot as well. Cause I can get a good start and I can be in that front group straight away. But um, I think, 
yeah, I do think my starts and I'm I'm good at picking people off, I think, in races as well. Like I'm I think I feel like I have quite good race craft. I can plan my moves before I make them. And I just found I struggled last year with when you get into that middle group of like battling for fifteenth, there's not a whole lot of race craft because everyone everyone just wants points. Whereas if you get to the front group, you actually find that people think about their passes more and people plan their passes and they're not just like trying to dive bomb three people because then they'll lose them three places back on the straight. So I think that, yeah, that's definitely what I need to work on my qualifying. Now, is, is there a time where like you were, like you said, you're with that group and say there's two groups, you know, there's a, a top, there's always that top probably six that are battling. Yeah. And then there's that second group and you find you're in the second group and you want to go, listen, if you guys just follow me, we can catch yeah. this group, but then they want to race and you go, you idiots. But then you end up having to race them. I mean, yeah, <laughs> it is really, it's so frustrating because you just want to lift your visor up and explain to everyone that if you stick behind me, you're going to, we're going to catch the group in front and you'll see it all the time on TV. People tap, people tap the seats. No one listens to that. And no. I know <laughs> to me, no that's the funniest thing in the world because when they go and they tap it and I laugh my ass off because they're doing this and I'm going, they're not going to listen to you because they're going to think no. I'm faster than you and go, if you were, you'd yeah. be in front of me. Now just follow me and we can catch these Yeah. Yeah, I think that's hilarious. So you've been in that situation. No, so what now? Yeah, I, I mean, in, it happened to me this weekend, but um, it was actually it was my teammate. Uh, she passed me, and then she tapped a seat. But we had two laps left, and I think the gap was like three, four seconds to the group in front. I was like, I'm sorry, I can't, I can't, <laughs> I, won't, I can't listen to that. But even if it was anyone who tapped their seat, I just like. No, because you always think you're faster than even when once they're past you, you still think you're faster than them. Because <laughs> you're like, no, I can pass you back now. <laughs> <laughs> that is great. They pass you. Go. Yeah, I'm still faster than them. I mean, they pass me. So you know what? Oh, yeah, I can pass them back. <laughs> <laughs> but I can pass you back. Look, watch it. <laughs> yeah. Now, with your teammates, Denise, right? It's Denise, right? Yeah, Denise. Yeah. Uh, yeah the Italian. The Italian. Yeah, 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 she's lovely. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think that is hilarious. I think everybody thinks they're faster than the other person. I know. I just get a kick out of it because I'm watching it. When you watch it from TV, I'm sure it's easier than, you know, when you're actually racing, everything's different. But I'm watching it and I just laugh every time I see it. At every level, I laugh because, like, you guys, just just get like this and you guys can catch that lead group. But then they yeah, battle yeah. and then you go, okay, what the hell? I guess here, here we are. Yeah, yeah. It does, it does get frustrating, to be fair. You just want to tell people. They're like, well, they're racing as well, so. Well, here's something that... No, oh, go, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. So again, sorry. Oh, no. I was going to ask you, like, there's always been a debate, at least it, amongst the people I talk to. It's like, when it comes to... I think that it's more even between, I think, you know, the men and women or boys and girls when they're racing in road yeah. racing than in motocross, you know, because motocross yeah. is a little bit more physical. So, you know, I, I think it's, you know, it kind of favors men if it was men and women together and road racing, it's pretty much equal. So yeah, yeah. what, like, what do you have to do so, uh, to get to that top group other than qualifying? If you were, if you don't even level, let's say you qualify in the top two rows with your great yeah. starts, do you think you can win? And you think it makes a difference if, if it's a boy or a girl, I mean, a man or woman? I do think that uh, you kind of almost have a target on your back being a girl because especially at the front, none of the boys want to be beat by girls and they won't admit that, but it's true. You can tell that they'll try a lot harder to pass you if just because you're a girl. But um, I think other than that, I don't really think there's a difference between the boys and the girls as in like, even though I'm on the front two rows. I don't see any reason why I can't win if I qualify in the front two rows. Uh, I don't feel like it's a physical... It's, on our bikes, it, it's a lot easier on our bikes because they, they weigh a lot, we uh, a lot less. Um, but I think there's no reason why the girls can't win. I don't think, and I think it will come this year, 100%. There will be a girl that wins. But obviously, I'd love for it to be me. And obviously, <laughs> I'm going to be right to say it'll be me. But, um, or, or at least be on the podium. That would be good. But I do think it's coming. There's a lot of fast girls in the class this year. And not just in my team, but in just in general, there's a lot of us. And I think some like watching some of them and following some of them, there's definitely some good girls that could like definitely put on the podium, I think. 
I, you know, I, I, I followed that class because I, I interviewed my friend Lissy and, and I, and I, and I, so I followed the whole class and I agree totally that class, man, has some really young females coming up and plus you're on a great team, that FHO team. I think your owner's great and you got, to me, you've got the greatest support, the support group around you because in the, in the, in the men's division, you got Josh Brooks and you got Hickman. So you got, and there's Maria Costello there. So you got everybody to pick their brain. I mean, and nothing but great people to pick their brain from. Yeah, yeah, like definitely. Obviously, there's a lot of experience in the team. So if you need help with anything, like you go to Pete or you go to Josh. So obviously they've been, Pete's been doing BSB since before I was born. Not that I probably make you feel really old, but <gasps> yeah, it is true. He's been doing it since before I was born. So like I can go to him and ask for help and, We've got obviously we've got um, that new BMW class. So we've got Richard Cooper, who's also raced at like like high level at BSB, and he's used to like the smaller bikes. So if I ever needed anything like any advice on how to race or what to do on the smaller bikes, I'd go to him. And it's just such a big team, and like there's some obviously you've got like Maria who's raced, and she's now helping all us girls, and she helps us like not even just with the racing side, but the emotional side because. We're all very different, like as characters, we're all very different. I, I'm the sort of person that's like, I, I'm never happy until I win. So I could get top ten, but then I've been like, oh, I was like only close off top five, and she has to kind of just like take me aside and remind me that I'm, I'm improving. She has to just remind me that. So, yeah, it's like, and obviously Faye's like give us this platform, and like the support she's given us is like amazing. Like I couldn't ask for anything more. And like, obviously we've got now, we've been given like a training program and nutrition program um, and just everything they've given us, it's just amazing. And it's probably made me like the road I am today. You know, and it's funny you say that about the, uh, you know, the training program, because that, that's, that's another thing that made me go, I want to talk to her. For some reason, when I saw you running on that treadmill, there was, there was just something about that. And it seemed like nothing, it's just you running, but I, I, I connected with that. I go, she's a little different. You know what I mean? Like, but in a good way, I saw you run. I go, she's really into like into it. You know what I mean? I saw you do that and you lift it. I go, yeah. Like, I don't know why, yeah. but I connected with that, you know? Yeah. I think like for me, even if I wasn't racing, I'm training because it doesn't, even, it doesn't just help me with like, I think training is like, 10% help you physically and 90% of the training is mental because some of the stuff that's in my training program, I just, I look at it at first. And I'm like, God, I could never do that. And so the stuff that we have to do like these intervals and stuff, but then I do them and I'm like, wow, like it feels so good once you've done it. And it is a lot, it's a lot of mental like training. So to keep going through like these intervals and stuff. And that, I think that helps me more on track than the actual, the physical part. Obviously the physical part does help because I can get on a bike now and do, like how I could just go around the track and put in like fairly good lap times for me and not be tired. But I always find now that when I come back in, I'm not sweating or anything. And like half of me is like, is that the training? Or and then half of me is like, I need to try harder. <laughs> but I'm like, it does. Uh, my fitness has definitely got a lot better since I've been on the training program. But I think mentally, I'm stronger as well. Now, now, take me through your, your mental process, like on race day. Like from the moment you wake up, how do you get ready for the race? I think the moment I wake up, I'm like instantly nervous. <laughs> like I do, I think nerves is a big thing, but it's a good thing for me. So, but obviously we have all like because at BSB we're kind of last race of the day, so it like in a way you're kind of waiting around all day, and you kind of you have to kind of distract yourself so you don't get nervous all day. But I find that like I have like my own routine, like so I have to get dressed. Like I put my levers on exactly half an hour before I have to go. Like it cannot be a minute over or a minute at, like before. And then I've got a lot of people like to listen to music. I actually find listening to music makes me more anxious because I feel like I'm in like an enclosed space. Yeah. And that's all I think about is like oh, I've got a race now. But then yeah, I have like my own routine. So i put my levers on and then exactly five minutes before I have to go out, I'll put my helmet and my gloves on. And then everyone knows once I've got my helmet and gloves on, you can't speak to me. Like, I will not answer you once I've got my helmet and my gloves on. I, can, I can't speak to anyone. 
and then I'll do my stretches before I get on the bike and then yeah but I, that is, I have to follow that routine oh that's my good luck routine and do you like like do you like that silence like nobody can talk to you because everybody's different some people you know they have a jovial kind of approach some people like you like you like just, hey don't 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 talk to me now I think before lock like, before I've got my helmet on you can spit obviously I'm a bit nervous you can tell that I'm a bit nervous but it's like good nerves but once I've got my helmet on, I can't speak to anyone. I just I like that's my like zone, if you know what I mean. And that's like when I'm thinking about like I'm just go I just go through my head like I just do a laugh in my head once I've got my helmet on, and then I just like. I do speak to myself as well. I don't know. If, I hope other people do that. Otherwise, it's really weird. But I do speak to myself once I've got my helmet on. <laughs> do, do, do do you talk out loud? Do you talk out loud? I talk not so that everyone can hear because everyone will probably look at me like, oh, what are you doing? <laughs> but I do like, I speak like once I've got my visor down when the lights are on, I just, I'm just like, come on, come on, come on. And like, I, I always think like once I've got my visor down and then like when the lights come on, I'm like, this is the best. Like that is, if I could pinpoint a feeling when the lights come on before they're about to go off, that is the best feeling ever. And I, I think that is 100% something I could pinpoint out. So it's, it's the, the moment before? Like when the lights come on and your eyes are like wide open and you're just like this and you're waiting for them to go off. And I just think oh, it's just that's just the best feeling ever. I, I I agree with you to me. I mean, I literally watch because I'm, I'm a dork like that. But when I'm at home watching MotoGP, I'm like this. I'm, I'm on my chair like this. It's like eight o'clock in the morning and I'm like this and I'm doing this. Like I'm a, I'm a grown man in my room going. Like this. Yeah. <laughs> but but that's how I do it. Put it this way. This is a true story. One time I was at the light. I'm so, I just think MotoGP all the time. So I'm at the light yeah. on my bike and I'm like this. And I didn't notice m my roommate is across the street in her truck and she's got a friend in her truck. And her friend goes, what is he doing? And my roommate goes, he thinks he races MotoGP. <laughs> So I'm looking at the traffic light like this and she's just going, yeah, he, he thinks he races. And I didn't even know they were <laughs> So I'm literally exactly the same. Like when I'm watching on TV, I'm like, I'm not there. And I'm like, I literally sat like this. I'm like, let the clutch out. And I was like, yeah, I would have, I would have won that. I would have been first in turn one. <laughs> So we're, we're, we're both one of the same when it comes to that. Yeah. We're one of the same. So tell me, tell me your biggest oh shit moment. I always ask every racer this. That's the moment where like, hey, you think you're doing well. And all of a sudden, like my, my favorite oh shit moment when I talked to Sean Dylan Kelly, who races Moto2 now. He, yeah. said, he said he was in Red Bull Rookies Cup. And he said he's just whoa, going through it. He's coming through this turn thinking he's, oh, he's going to hit this turn fast. And he said, Raul Fernandez said, but he goes, are you <laughs> shitting me? <laughs> and he goes, oh, shit. This is what I got to do to race these guys. Yeah. So what is your oh, shit moment? Your biggest oh, shit moment? I think it was. It was uh, two years ago and I was in like Thunder Sport, what's known as Sunport Championship. And that was my first proper championship um, before BSB. And it was at Cadwell Park, actually. And uh, I won my first ever race that weekend. Like, I'd never won a race. Before. I'd won a race at, like, my local track, but not at a national championship. And I'd won my first race. And I had, like, a chance of, um, like, winning the championship, even without, like, because I was on the podium in other races. So then I was, like, obviously I was a bit excited. And then so it came to the second race of the day. And, uh, like, you go down to the holding area and it was, like, freezing. It, was, it just dropped really cold. And I was sat waiting. And uh, we ran out on, I was, I was on pole and I went out on my warm up lap. And I think I got a bit too excited and I crashed on the warm up lap. And literally, I was, I remember sliding through the grass and I was like, oh shit, like I'm not, I'm not going to be able to get back on. And I was like, that was, and then I didn't end up, I couldn't compete for the rest of the weekend because it absolutely totaled my bike. Like it was, it was at the corner where, um, so you have, uh, like Chris Kerr's is like a long right hand and then you've got the gooseneck before yes. man's that hairpin and I flipped left for the gooseneck and just took the front because my I had cold tire and it absolutely totaled the bike and I was like oh. I just remember rolling through and I was like shit and I thought my dad's gonna kill me <laughs> <laughs> I bet you felt about this big oh yeah I did I was so I was like when I was, I was like to Marshall I was like please don't take me back to the paddock I was like just take me home I was like I can't see my dad <laughs> and what'd your dad say what'd your dad say what'd he say 
Yeah. He'll, he'll always say, as long as I'm okay, it doesn't matter. But you can tell by his face. <laughs> like he'll say that with his teeth. He's like, as long as you're all right, it doesn't matter. <laughs> and then we, like, we tried to fix the bike, but it was we didn't have everything with us. And it was a nightmare. And I was like, that was when I was like, probably most scared of my dad. I, was, I had to start rolling through the grass, and that's all I could think of. I was just, oh, and my bike. <laughs> I think that is great. It's true. He's like, he wants his baby to be okay, but after that, it's like, oh, really? Doing a warm up yeah. lap? Really? Doing a warm up lap? Really? But, yeah. Oh, <laughs> that's hilarious to me. <laughs> well, at least you made it. You're okay now. So, so what are the yeah. so what are the goals now? So what what are your goals? Did you did you map out like goals for the for the season for the for the year for a five year plan? Like, what's your, what's your goals for this year? I, I always say, look, I always do it one year at a time because I don't like to set massive expectations because if you set massive expectations, you also like, you can expect to be disappointed. So I think my goals for this year are like top 10 results. I'd love to get a podium. That's like a big goal. That is a, probably the biggest goal like for this year. If I could get on the podium, that'd be great. I've still got a bit of a way to go yet. So I haven't got a top 10 yet. And I think, Donning, my next track is Donington, and that's where I got my best result last year. I finished 11th. I think there's there's definitely a chance I can get a top 10 if I can qualify well. So once I've worked on my qualifying, I can work out a plan on how to qualify well. I think, yeah, my goal is definitely this year for top 10. And then I think long term, it's hard to think long term because anything could happen. Um, I'd love to race because I love 400. So I think it's such a fun class. And I think... If I jumped on, I'm because I'm only small, so I think if I jumped on a 600, it'd be like starting all over again. So I'd love to stay on a 400 for like for now. I'd love to do like I don't know, like a European Championship or something. I'd love to do that uh, like Worlds 400. Yes, that that would be a, a big goal, like what Anna Carrasco did, and go down that route. That that is murderers row right there, but those kids, wow! I mean, it's almost scary to watch. They they go at it. I know, I know. Would you would, you, like, would you look forward to it though? Would you like that? Yeah, it's 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 kind of like that's what it is like at BS. It's not to that level though, because them they like really scary. Like even to watch them, I'm like I'm sweating watching them. Yeah, and like, I can't even imagine being in their their races, but. Yeah, that's what it is like. And it, I think it's just boring just because they're so similar and the skill level is so similar. It does it all like it does become dangerous and you kind of like we all understand that our class is probably one of the most dangerous classes to be in. Just because if someone in third falls off, you've got like 23 other people that have to avoid them. Mm-hmm. And like you kind of have to acknowledge that, but you can't think about it because if you think about that, you might as well stop racing. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you just have to, you just, it's just something that you've got to acknowledge, I think. Has there, been, has there ever been a time where you actually like, like were like kind of scared, like, oh shit, this is, this is getting hair raising? I think probably this weekend, to be fair, when I was in that massive group of riders and I was like, everyone was getting so close and I just can't believe how much you have to concentrate to not fall off and not knock into someone. Yeah. So I think, 100% this weekend was an eye opener to what it's like to be in a massive group of riders. And yeah, just it, although it's scary, it's why it's why you do it and it's what you enjoy. It's just, I think it's just the adrenaline of it, like the, that adrenaline pump of being in a group and avoiding people and making passes. It just makes it just so fun. Would you <laughs> consider scary? Would you consider yourself an adrenaline junkie? Oh, 100%. I'd, do, I'd love it. I love adrenaline. Even from like being little, I just, like, I'd love to, I, anything that, to be fair, anything that gives me adrenaline, like, I love going like rock climbing and like, like, but the rock climbing without the harness, like, you know, like the boulder in. But what? even like, yes. that's like, it's like the ones where you have like a crash mat, but you, so you climb without harnesses and stuff. Even that gives me a bit of an adrenaline and like, I'd love to go skydiving and just stuff like that. I just, it's just it's like a drug it must be like a drug you just it and when you're like it, i find that when i'm not racing like or yeah, especially on a sunday night when you get home you have like a come down it's like oh, i need like 
I need that adrenaline again and you just that's what makes you look forward to you, that just makes you want to ride all the time then just that adrenaline how do you feed that during the week though if you only race on the weekend how do you feed that during the week like from Monday, from Sunday night through I don't know Wednesday or Thursday how do you feed that that, that adrenaline drug I, I have to literally training because if I'm training a lot I'm training to for racing now so I think like my training is what keep is what makes me excited I think because I'm like if I'll complete this session training I'll complete this session training it's going to help me on the weekend it's going to make me a better rider and so I just like, I enjoy my training just as much as I enjoy my riding I think that's important as well to enjoy both and it kind of then blends in as one so then you kind of almost always ride in kind of thing but without being on a bike okay all the time now uh, uh, correct me if I'm wrong I think you have a boyfriend I think I do yeah uh, he also races so his name's Cameron Hall uh, he races in stock 600 at, at BSB now, how, and the, uh, obviously you guys met at the racetrack obviously right yeah 100% yeah okay so <laughs> true race the racetrack so how did that happen? Did, that, did he like come along and give you like pointers and you were like, ah, thanks. And you're like, he's not so bad looking. I mean, so like, how did it happen? How did he, how did he finagle his way through? Cause there's had to be like a big long line of people trying to help you. And then he had to find, find a way to like, Hey, how are you? And by the way, would you like to get some tea? I don't know how you guys do it, but how would you like, get, <laughs> <laughs> would you like to get some tea? <laughs> yeah, I think, well, everyone at racing kind of knows each other anyway. And I think, we just kind of, I don't even remember. I feel like I should remember like, how we like met. But um, I know we, I just remember like we just started speaking and then he came and watched me um, like on a track day or something. But he also rode, but he wasn't doing that track day and he came and watched me. And then he kind of like wanted to help me at the same time. And then we just spoke more. And then I was like, because I, I know he liked me before I liked him. I was just friends with him at first. He's going to hang me for saying that. But um, <laughs> he was 100% interested in me first. But, um, yeah, and I think, and I realised, oh, actually, he's all right, to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> and then, yeah, and then we just got together. And then ever since then, he's just like, he is great. Like he helps me loads and he's been, he actually raced in the same class as me. So he knows a loads about like everything to do with like suspension. And his dad is like, his dad is a magician with like suspension and stuff. Like I can, I don't know suspension. I just tell him what the bike's doing and he's like, do this and we'll do it. And it's like, wow. Like it's, it's like magic. I don't know how he does it to be fair, but yeah, Cam's like, Cam's like my rider coach as well. Rider so, coach yeah. boyfriend. That, that that's good though. Yeah. That's good though. I just I just think it's kind of funny. Like, did he try to give you advice and you want to be like, hey, listen, do you know who my grandma is? Yeah, I don't really need your <laughs> advice. Do you know who my grandma and my mom is? Yeah, okay. So why don't you just watch me? Because I know I'm good looking. So why don't you just watch me? And if you want to go out and have some, I don't know, like I said, some tea and crumpets or whatever, we can do that later. But I don't need your advice. <laughs> I'll talk to my grandma if I need some. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, he, he is really good. Like, he, he is. I, to be fair, like his advice is very critical. So he'll watch me, and he'll. Ha it, oh, it's almost like he, it feels like he's having a go at me because I used to be terrible for like I used to scrape my toes all the time. I still do. Like I ride like a penguin. My feet <laughs> right always having a go at me for that, and I go through so many pairs of boots just doing that. And so he's like. Even though he's critical, it kind of makes me want to not do it more. And it, it, that's what improves me is him being critical. I'm like, oh, I need to show him that I can like do this and I can be faster and stuff. But like, I think that's probably one of my goals to be fair. I need to be faster than him on uh, on one of our bots because he did it in, he did Junior Super Sport in, I can't remember what year, it's like 2020, 2019 or something like that. So I've always been like looking at my sector times and I remember one of the best feelings I ever had is when I could tell him that I was faster than him in one sector of every single track on the map. So I'm now faster than him in one sector. And I was like, yes. <laughs> so now I need to actually like find, I need to beat a lap time. That's my next goal. Would you, would, like, You're not going to give me advice anymore because I'm faster than you. <laughs> <laughs> now, would you like to race him? If, if, it, if it all worked out, would you like to be in the same category with him? Oh, I'd love to. I mean, we, we go training together like, on pit bikes and stuff. 
and it's actually quite good because it makes me more aggressive. So, because I'm like, I want to beat him. I just want to like pass him all the time. And he'll like, he's not scared to like, he'll just, I'll be tipping into a corner literally on the apex and he'll just come up the inside of me and sit me up. And I'm like, do you not know that I'm your girlfriend? No, like, you could hurt me. But he's not scared doing it. And he's like, it just teaches me to be more aggressive, to be fair. But I think because he races 600s, I could, I think I could get on a 600 to be faster than him. But I'd love him to go back on a 400 and just race around with him. And that would probably make me a better rider, to be fair, because I just want to beat him. I think that's great. I, I, honestly, I can't think of a better way to have a, a, a relationship. You know, you do the same thing together and you both yeah. share the same passion and it's a competitive yeah. passion, you know? Then, yeah. yeah. So, so do you think, I'm mean, almost going back to what I was saying, do you think, though, that girls can have that, that we always call it that dog in you, you know, when like when, when it's time to, to be that dog, when it's time to get a little, like, like I said, get the, get the elbows out and like somebody stands you up and you got to be like, all right, I'll come back at you like this. Do you, yeah, yeah. Can women have that dog in them to, to get where they need to get to, the, to, to win a championship in your category or another category? Matter of fact, even all the way to the top of BSB in the Superbike, do you think women can have that dog in them? 100%. I think like the attitude that the girls have now, like especially in our class, like they're just as aggressive as the, if not more aggressive than the boys. And they're like, I think once you've got a helmet on, like if for, for anyone watching who doesn't know who's a girl, you would not be able to tell which rider's a girl and which rider's a boy. It's just, everyone's just as aggressive. Everyone wants it just as much as each other. And I don't see why the girls can't do well. And I think it definitely, it 100% gets harder as you get on the faster bikes it becomes more physical and I think the girls have to put in a little bit more effort like outside of riding uh, just to be like more physically prepared but I don't see any reason why they can't do well because we're just as aggressive as the boys and if not more because we all want to beat the boys because it just feels good. <laughs> now do you have that dog in you? Do you have the dog in you? Uh, 100%. 100%. What brings the dog out of you? What brings that dog out of you? Probably just like wanting to prove that we can beat boys. Like that, I that I think a lot of people are like, oh, do you want to be like fastest girl? I'm like, I don't even want to be fastest girl. I want to be faster than everyone. Like to me, being fastest girl isn't an achievement. Being faster than everyone else on the track is an achievement. That's kind of the thing that like people think it would be good to have like a women's series and like they have a good idea for like getting women recognised. But I think winning a women's series doesn't feel as good as winning a lot like, mixed series and i just think that yeah i just think it would be good to just keep the mixed because once everyone's got a helmet on like i said you can't tell who's a girl and who's not yeah you know i'm with you i mean don't get me wrong there's a there's a w series uh in racing you know for women in four wheels which i think is great but like you said i really think that when it boils down to it Nobody really wants a handout win. I mean, and it wouldn't be a handout win. It's still racing. But you want to be with the best. The best want to race the best. You know what I mean? And that's what you want. So, yeah, I, I always wanted to get a woman's perspective who actually races and see what they thought. Because, yeah. yeah, I mean, when it comes to racing, I, I give props to... I mean, Anna gets all the credit. as Well, she should. But I think Maria, what Maria Herrera does is, yeah. is something outstanding. She is a really good rider. I think Maria Herrera, like she, she's in Moto E now, isn't she? And she, she's just as good as the people around her. And yeah, she's a she's a really good rider. And even people like like Kayla Yakov, who does like the, I know she does the 400s over there. Like I've watched like footage of her, and I just think she's so, she is like really aggressive, and you cannot tell that it's a girl once she's got a helmet on and. I think she, I think I watched something recently, and she agreed with me. She said she doesn't think there should be a women's series right. because she it's it looks better if the girls beat boys or beat everyone rather than just the women. Yeah, and I saw her. I think the same thing that you saw. The, the greatest thing was how uh, Raz, uh, Raz, you know what I'm talking about, Raz from Warsaw. I can't say yeah. his last name. Yeah, the, the Turk. Yeah, he uh, he yeah. gave he gave her credit for being good on the brakes, and that just made her go. <gasps> 
you know, because yeah, yeah. and she was like, he said I was good on the brakes, which I thought <laughs> <laughs> I thought was great. You know what I mean? So what? Yeah. So what? Have you ever had the red mist? That's what I want to talk about. Do you ever like who? Have, somebody pissed you off to the point you were like, you kind of like got out of your out of your body for a second, like okay, you had to keep it together from just going crazy. I don't know. I think it's hard. Like it when if someone makes a move on you. And it's like that, and they're like that close, or it, or you lose positions from that. You kind of see red, and then you end up like it's a good thing because it actually makes you faster. So when people like if you're up and not come up the inside, you you do. I, I don't know about everyone else, but I just see red, and it just makes me like I need to get them back, but not in the lock. I'm gonna knock you off way. Yeah, like just not. I need to beat you now, like that that kind of way. And I think yeah, that's probably like the only time where. I really see red. <laughs> yeah. yeah, other than that, it's weird because the paddock's a weird place, I think. Like, no one's friend. Well, you kind of have to say you're not friends with people because when you become friends with people, you don't want it to affect on track. Like, I don't get me wrong, like, I, I have friends in the paddock, like, uh, a, lot, like, a lot of the girls, obviously the girls in my team and stuff, and this is something I've spoke about with, like, the girls and everything, like, um, they're my teammates, but when I'm racing, I'm racing for myself. And if I have to beat my teammates to to win or to get better places, I'm not going to hesitate, like making like moves that I'd make on anyone just because you're my teammate. Do you know what I mean? Oh yeah, it's it's, it's like the movie Heat, where you go, you know what? And there's a flip side to that, my friend. You know, that, I mean, they're saying the same thing to you. I mean, which is, but it's racing. I think every racer who's a real racer understands that. It's like, hey, listen, yeah. man. You know, we might be teammates and whatever, whatever. And of course, you know, we, you know, we sign the things, but and there's nothing personal. But it's like, I want to win, and you want to win. It might be on the same, yeah. you know, we, you know, we're teammates. But when that visor goes off, and we're like this after that, yeah. after it goes green. Hey, it's every person for himself. It's like it's literally like a perfect example is what happened this weekend when Denise tapped the seat. She's on my team, but I can't listen to it because I want to beat you. And then she actually um in the first race, she was chasing me and I had bike problems. So like I've got something I had something wrong with my suspension this weekend. And basically uh she was ch- she was chasing me and another rider was chasing me for fourteenth. And on the last lap she tried to come up the inside of the ride. Obviously, we all ride like in a road like this. So she kind, she tried to come up the inside of the other rider, but I had to take lock. Like, I had to go into the corner slow to get my exit because when I was accelerating, my suspension was squatting, my exhaust pipe was scraping on the floor because I, I literally had no suspension. And so when I was riding out the corner, it was like it was like riding a jet ski. It was like coming out of that. So I had to go around the corner so slow, and I just kept thinking. I'm surprised no one's running to the back of me yet. And then when I finished the race, I realised that Denise weren't behind me. I was like, oh, no. And she said she had to break to avoid me, and she ended up hitting into someone else. And I was like, I'm not even sorry. Well, I know that's how I am sorry, but it's not my fault at the end of the day. Look, I've got a ride for me, and... <laughs> It's racing. It's racing. Yeah. It's racing. It's racing. We we all understand it. It's racing. It's racing. Yeah. So okay. So the next five years, where does Jamie Hanks Elliott want to be? In five years. So right now you're what nineteen? Yeah. At twenty four, you're going to be at the top level of whatever you're at. I can just tell right now because you got that dog in you. So <laughs> in five years, where are you going to be? You're going to be in BSB. Are you going to be in Moto three and Moto GP? Are you going to be in yeah in uh, World Superbike in, in the three hundred series? Where are you going to be in five years? That is literally the hardest question that I ever get asked because it, you literally never. I'd love to. I think if it was a choice and if I, everything goes well, I'd love to do that. World Super Sport 300 class and then progress from there and obviously I'd love to like go, I've, I've not rode a 600 yet so I wouldn't know how I'd fare on one I'd love to have a go on one but I think that 300 class is definitely for me and it, it suits my size and everything and how I ride I think definitely that's probably something that I'd love to do and even with this team if this team could take us there that would be I think it'd be amazing and it would definitely be another step. Faye's already made a step in making women's known in the sport. But I think once you take that to world level, it would just like scale it so much more 
going to be so many more girls from all over the world that see that there's a team that like four girls and that's four is four girls. You know, I, I love Faye. I love what she's doing. I think I hit her up a couple. I think I hit her up to try to, you know, get her on here. And yeah. she never responded. But, but, but I want to get her on, man. I, I, you know what I thought was funny was that how you were on the grid getting ready to, you know, do your sighting lab. She's like, we have a new team member. And she, and she got an interview and you're like, yeah, thanks. I'm getting ready to raise you. <laughs> yeah, because I, I, I know they were coming up to do that. And literally said before it happened, I was like, Dad, I can't speak to anyone when I'm on the line. So I was like, literally, whatever I said, I didn't, I didn't even know what I said. I kind of just rambled on, and I was like, I wasn't even thinking about what I was saying. I was just like, yeah, thanks. <laughs> All I could think about was the race. Jamie, God damn it. It's been a pleasure talking to you. I had a great time. I, I, I loved how I reached out late. We got it. We but we got it done. I reached out late and we got it done. I'm so happy. I, I, I'm a big fan. I saw you. I think you got three points this weekend. Yeah. I mean, you got three points, so I think I'm gonna say I'm gonna, I'm gonna go on 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 a on a uh, on a limb here and say you're gonna get your podium this year. I'm gonna say you get a. I'm gonna say you get. I'm talking just out of out of the top of my head here. You, you're gonna get at least two podiums this year. I'd love that. That would be dream come true. You're gonna get at least two podiums, and I know you don't want to disappoint me, so you're gonna get two podiums oh, this year. I'm gonna have to do it now. <laughs> You're gonna do it. You're gonna do it. So it's in your head now. We're like, we're buddies like this now. We're stuck together. Yeah. You understand me? We're stuck. Tell your boyfriend I'm sorry, but we're stuck together. We're like this now. <laughs> so I can't I begin to mention you in the post. <laughs> <laughs> So I want to thank you so much for your time. She's Jamie Hanks, LH Racing, in the British Super Sports Series. She's 16th in points. She has three points with FHO Racing, the BMW Motor Rad Academy. Thank you so much for your time, Jamie. I'm a big fan of yours now. Even um, I take it back. I'm even bigger fan of you now. I'm gonna. I'm when you guys race. Uh, trust me. I'm gonna send you a good luck text, and that's it. I want to get. You, I want you, you know get where you got to be in mentally. But thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much. Thank you. And tell, enjoyed it. And tell you, Nana, I said uh, I'm a big fan of her now too. I will do. I will do. Yeah. <laughs> thank you so much. I appreciate you. Thank you guys for watching Tales from a Gemini. I'm BT. You know how I say about this time. You know the word. Bye.